SNC Vista SD underground distribution switchgear operates at high voltage. Failure to observe the precautions below will result in serious personal injury or death. Some of these precautions may differ from company operating procedures and rules. Where a discrepancy exists, users should follow their company's operating procedures and rules. This video is intended to be used in conjunction with the written instruction sheet included with your product. Vault-mounted style SNC Vista SD underground distribution switchgear is shipped in a wooden crate. Check the bill of lading to make sure all listed shipping skids, crates, and containers are present. Remove all separately packaged components, if any, shipped with a switchgear assembly. Remove the crating from around the switchgear assembly and attach the lifting slings. Use 6 foot or 183 centimeter lifting slings of equal length to lift the vault mounted switchgear. For two way and three way switchgear, lifting slings of 4 feet or 122 centimeters are acceptable. Attach the lifting slings to the lifting points. Arrange the slings to distribute weight evenly and avoid sudden starts and stops when lifting. Lower the switchgear into place. Then secure the switchgear using half inch fasteners. There's more work to be done when installing single wave vault mounted switchgear through a 31 and a half inch manhole. Remove any motor operators if supplied. Then, remove any optional continuous ground bus if supplied and the upper bushings or bushing well adapters. The bushings require the SNC bushing and bushing well adapter assembly tool to remove. See SNC instruction sheet 695-530 for details. Lift the switch gear and remove the mounting stand feet. Lower the switch gear through the manhole opening. Then reinstall the mounting feet. Maneuver the switch gear into place and secure it using half inch fasteners. Reinstall any optional ground bus, upper bushings, bushing well adapters and optional motor operators removed previously. Before energizing the switchgear, replace the shipping covers on all bushings and bushing wells with elbows or insulated protective covers or caps. Failure to replace the shipping covers on all bushings with elbows or insulated protective covers or caps can result in a flashover and serious personal injury or death. Install the cable support brackets in accordance with the appropriate reference drawing included in the installation and operation information kit that came with your switchgear. Now, terminate the cables with the elbows, following the elbow manufacturer's instructions. When installing cable that will be attached to the switchgear, provide a strain relief segment to minimize the load on the bushings. Cables must be allowed to expand and flex without putting a significant load on the bushings. Next, connect the ground pads on each way of the switchgear to the system ground in accordance with your standard grounding practice. If the switchgear is furnished with the optional ground bus, connect the ground bus to the system ground in accordance with your standard grounding practice. Use the equivalent of 4 aught copper in either a single or multiple connection to realize the maximum momentary rating of the switchgear. For a multiple cable connection, cables smaller than 1 aught copper or equivalent should not be used. Connect the cable concentric neutral wires to the grounding system as appropriate. Refer to the operating instruction sheet for information on closing the ways and testing the switchgear. We hope you have found this video informative. If you have any questions, please visit our website at snc.com.